literally China runs North Korean regime. They just keep the cash for Kim Jong Un. That money goes to Kim Jong Un's pocket, and that money being spent on building concentration camps and building missiles to harm humanity. Hi everyone! Welcome to my channel. My name is Yumi Park, and I'm a North Korean defector human rights activist. So today, guys, finally in this video, we are going to talk about how to end the deadly North Korean regime, and especially how the CCP, the Chinese government, can kill Kim Jong Un. And this is really, I think, the focus of the video today is really about the liberation of North Korean people. The North Korean regime has been enslaving and torturing, starving. 25 millions of human beings. Imagine that if there is an island, there is a monster that puts 25 of millions of human beings, mothers, children, fathers, and these people being tortured daily by a monster. What would we do? We would do something, right? When the Holocaust happened, we said it's never going to happen again. We are going to do whatever it takes to save these Jewish people dying from in these concentration camps. Well, the United Nations said that what is happening in North Korea is a modern day Holocaust. People are going through same misery and then the world is not doing anything about it. And especially when it comes to North Korea, this have like the misconception that people are having. It's about, oh, there's nothing can be done and there's no solution. And therefore we just not gonna do anything. And in this video, I am trying to prove that there is something that can be done and clearly there's a way out of this situation and that the key is China. And China, I'm going to talk about five steps what China can do to starve Kim Jong-un and end this brutal deadly regime in the face of humanity. Number one thing that China can do is really cutting the money supply to the North Korean regime. Doing that means through the, the North Korean workers in China. That is the main key. There are actually 200,000 North Koreans. They are not defectors, guys. The workers that sent by North Korean regime working in China. And I talked about how in North Korea, in the gas stations where the most beautiful ladies are. And this is one of those places. In numerous places in China, Shanghai, everywhere, there are North Korean restaurants. In these restaurants, actually North Korean young girls between age like 16 to 17 to 20 to 23. So there's a little bit off because it's a Korean age, but around like 16, 17 to 22, very young girls, they get trained for years and then they go to China. They work like slaves. They work in this restaurant and then they supposedly get paid something like less than $100 a month. However, the regime takes all that money from them and saying they are going to instead give them food, public rations. When these girls work in Chinese this North Korean restaurants, they have to perform uh, music, they have to do instrument, they have to serve, they have no freedom to go out, by the way, even though they are living in China. They have no freedom to do anything. It's kind of a detention center for North Korean girls in China. And their goal, every single day, they make money for Kim Jong-un. They work all day long. They cannot even keep the tips. I'm sure like some of you heard about these restaurants. They're not only in China, actually. They're in Cambodia. They are in sometimes in European countries and Thailand. You can, if you ever visit Thailand or Cambodia, look for North Korean restaurants. These girls from Pyongyang, these beautiful girls who were just born in the wrong country. And all day long, they're serving in this restaurant and make money. And then that money goes to Kim Jong-un's pocket and that money being spent on building concentration camps and building missiles to harm humanity. And China can do something about that. China can let these workers work in China. However, that money has to be going directly to these girls. They can do that. They have the power. However, China doesn't do that. And they are just keep using these girls and enriching Kim Jong-un. Number two. 
This is a more direct way of China controlling North Korean regime. That is, there is a room in China. I mean, because North Korea has a very heavy international sanction on them, they cannot really open up the like bank accounts and then trade money. I do hear that there is a lot of secret bank in Switzerland that Kim Jong Un holds, and his names are holding. But however, he still needs foreign cash to run a country, run a dictatorship. So therefore, as I said, you know, there are money that being made by these workers, hackers, and drug and selling weapons coming to China. In these rooms, different cities next to North Korean consulate, they just keep the cash for Kim Jong Un, and once a week, once a month, they transfer this money to Kim Jong Un through Chinese border to North Korea. China easily can confiscate that because this is going against international sanction. If China follow the law, international law, they could not let this happen. However, however, under their watch, they are keep enriching Kim Jong Un and helping him to maintain his power. Number three. I'm sure some of you have saw this news. This New Year's North Korea had a, I mean, hacking on North Russia and foreign affairs groups in other countries. Now Kim Jong Un's hackers are the one of the main income revenue for Kim Jong Un. He's using these hackers to make money. He steals like a um, few pennies actually from billions of accounts in the world and going to ATM machines in Japan and stealing a lot of money through hackers. And these hackers' operations, by the way, in China, they in North Korea is hard to have an internet. There's really no internet access for the normal people. Therefore, these hackers operate in China, and China allows this criminal activity. North Korean hackers not just only hacking bank accounts. They bank. They hack the you know health British healthcare system. They. And hack the South Korean military and electricity and the sewer system. These hackers have done so much damage. Do you guys remember that North Korea was hacking Sony Studio in America because they made a movie this called Interview that making fun of Kim Jong Un? Those hackers operate in China, and China knows where they are, where they are, what they do. They could easily follow the international law again and. You know, kick them out. Then these hackers cannot make money for Kim Jong Un, and this is another way that China can help North Korean people. Number four, this is gonna be the most crucial way of ending Kim Jong Un's regime. That is cutting the oil supply to North Korea. North Korea does not have natural oil. They don't have anything that you know resources to get the oil out of their own country. So therefore, if China stops providing to oil, nobody gonna suffer in North Korea because nobody has cars, nobody has any modern technology. But however, Kim Jong Un's plants and the missile tanks need to have this oil. Without that, they cannot experiment the nukes. They cannot build the missiles. The country gonna collapse within a week. So no matter what happens, in China. Always supplies North Korea with oil, and this thing is going to urge the development of nukes that is an endanger all of us. And with this simple way, that China can end the North Korean regime, but they still choose not to. The last one is really just simply stop giving money to Kim Jong Un. China has been giving Kim Jong Un money, power, resources, information, everything that Kim Jong Un needs to stay in power, and that China has been the biggest sponsor. Literally, China runs North Korean regime. They run this concentration camp. This run modern day Holocaust. This is where it's so clear that who is accountable for this misery and suffering of human beings is China. And there are so many ways that China can do to end the regime. However, they still not choose to not to do that. And I think if we knew more about this, the role that China plays with the North Korean regime, and the you know the importance of us knowing about this and raising our voice and holding China accountable. We did not hold China accountable for COVID pandemic that killed millions of people, that stopped millions of lives. Look at our lives, how it changed. If China behaved in a more responsible way, no one, not these millions of people, didn't have to die. We don't hold China accountable. Not enough. 
what they do in this modern world is not acceptable. It is time for all of us to know the true horrors of CCP and what they are actually doing, how much damage they are causing to our progress as a humanity. And please guys hit that like button so YouTube algorithm gonna suggest this video to more people and share this video with anybody you know and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Love you guys.